hey guys uh, that that was like the stuff that that felt great top to bottom a couple of just little little bumpy bits there like just exits really out of sections little flubbers yeah, yeah. but but uh like coming into the breakdown was a little funny and a couple of other spots but i feel like there's the pocket that's the song yeah. cool. fills are great middle section makes more sense to me I'd even try one where you left a little more space in fact Ryan and I were just saying that maybe you leave the brakes in the tom fills or the stops and then in between we bring the concert toms in and do those you know as answers to your fills uh, now that could be good so just a lot more space kind of exactly do a little fill give it a bar for a response cool All correct right. here it comes <laughs> Say goodnight. Say goodnight. Love the fill. Dude, I love the fill. That's great. I think we can get it just a little better in time. It was really good. Same fill. One more time. Just duplicate the playlist and go one more time right away. Pretty great. Maybe one more. I kind of... Yeah, go again. Go again. Or however many more. Yeah. Okay, anytime. Just a little rush to the downbeat. Dude, that was great. Just a little pushy, maybe getting back into it, but, but really good. L last one, last one. Back was good. So I think we have it. We got it. We got it. Okay. Thank you. So you guys can take a five minute break. Hey. We're, we're in a great place. I got the comp down. The drums are good. It all feels pretty tight now. I want to go to the second verse and get a really bright, clear double of that second verse guitar part because I'd love to get it to just pop out of the speakers more, just come to life a little bit more. Maybe you could change pickups, try an octave on it, try maybe a shimmer pedal, whatever you feel might kind of bring it out of the speakers a little bit more. I love the part. I think it's really special. So whatever we can do to tweak the sound to, to make it have more importance. I think we should just do this. Let's just do it in mono. I'll just use the Vox amp just so it'll be a nice, tight, present little double. It won't have all the, the, the extra wash that the original stereo guitar had because it got, got too messy, too wobbly, too rich. OK, so give us a second. We're just going to make a mono track in here, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we got our track. I got my drum comp. There's a break in the middle of the song with some drum fills. And we want to try something different there. There's a great old 70s set of concert toms, which are single-headed drums, uh, that we want to try in the break. It might be a good character change to have the drum fills in the break have a totally different tone. Maybe we'll distort them, turn up the room mics. I don't know. We'll try something different in there. So we're going to set up a different set of toms, go out, do this quick overdub, and see what we can make of the bridge. So we're going to try one first off where we just punch you in on the drum break and just do your thing there. Okay. Great.
Okay. Hey, let's let's do this. That the the sound of those is really cool, but this isn't enough of a departure from what we had before. Okay. So let's try a take where we um, leave the other comp drums up, and you play in between them. Okay. And and I think for those tones to work, you do have to do the fills where you're across the toms. Because it's when you hear the the pitch changes that that's that's the fun factor. So basically, you're just going to play toms. Okay. This might not even work. It might be good with what we had. Oh, it's going to be sick. <laughs> I think what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to learn the comp a little bit. Yeah. And, and maybe what probably will be the only thing that will work is one or two of the longer fills. Like the Phil Collins type thing? Uh, dare I say, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Keep going. Okay, keep that. Okay, I'm going to give you one entire take. I mean, we obviously have too much stuff, and I'll edit it out. Yeah. But but uh, a couple of moments are really really great in there. Really fun. Cool. Let's keep that. Give me one more of just simpler fills. Okay. But we're good. This is going to be great. I'll, I think what I'm going to do is like I'm going to maybe mute a couple of the fills in the other take, use a couple of these, and go back and forth, and we can create something cool. It'll be good. Got it. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. Thank you. I know that was not easy. Bye. No, we got it. That's great. Thank you. Okay, finally, vocal time. Seriously. I know. Ryan's been waiting like all day to sing. So finally we're there. I thought what would be great is we're in the middle of doing vocals for the Wildling album right now, and we kind of go back and forth on two or three different microphones depending on what the song is and the, the, the intimacy or the bigness of the song. So we have three microphones up. A Sony C37A tube microphone, a classic old 70s U87, and we have a Perlman uh, vocal mic, which I've forgotten the model number, but this is Ryan's microphone, which he uses at home on the demo, and which you probably heard a little bit of it in the track. Um, and it sounds very good on his voice. It's a different sound, but My baby. it's his baby. He's My very baby. comfortable singing on it, and that's the most important thing. Even though I might have opinions about what Mike sounds the best on his voice, if he's performing better on a certain microphone, that's all that counts. So I thought it might be interesting for him to sing a little bit on each one of these microphones, and, and we could just hear the character change in the microphones, and then we'll find out which one suits the song the best, sits in the mix right, uh, has all the character that we need for the song. After we choose our microphone, we're going to put it through our vocal chain. So in the past, Ryan and I have been working, and I've been finding the right preamp, right EQ combination, right compressor. We've tried a number of different things. 
where we're at right now is we're using these Sunset Sound preamps, which are basically a version of an API preamp, but they're a little bit more hi-fi, a little fatter than a normal API. They have a different transformer, uh, different off-amp. So they're a little more open on the top end, a little chestier, a little warmer on the bottom. So we've been using the Sunset Sound preamp. Then I go into an API EQ for a little bit of tip-top air, uh, 15K kind of stuff if it needs it. And then I go into a Pultec equalizer as well for basically size to get the vocal to be important in the track, to add some top and bottom and to get it to rise above the mix. And then limiter-wise, he definitely sounds better on an 1176. Those tend to be great for rock vocals. They're aggressive and big sounding. As I mentioned before, they have that UTC transformer in them, which has got a lot of grit and a lot of character and a little bit of presence bump to it. So it, once again, helps the guitar or vocal project over the track. So for rock singers, a lot of, a lot of times the 70, 1176 is a really, really, really good compressor. Other times it's too colorful and you want something that's a little more neutral and doesn't change the vocal or doesn't add too much grit to it. But in this case, we found the 1176 works really, really well for Ryan. So the first mic that you're gonna hear is gonna be this Tube Sony C37A. So we'll get Ryan a step up. And I like to have the singer sing, not necessarily straight into the capsule, but maybe even a little under it. Still close to his mouth, but not directly into it. I feel like it gives a little bit more air to the sound and it's a little well balanced. And singers always hate me because it means the microphone's a little higher than they, they want it to be and they tend to reach up, which is a bad thing. So I find that I sometimes have to compromise position-wise to get it in a place where singer's comfortable and doesn't feel like he's stretching, but yet I get all the air that's necessary. So I think this is pretty good placement, and we'll check the others real quick and see. Step right over here. Let's see, I'm gonna move this a little in for you so we match it up to the other guy. And let's check the Perlman. And you could probably be about, I guess that's about three or four inches. Seemed to be about a good distance for you. Didn't get too dark or too poppy. And we'll, we'll put a pop screen on all these mics, but just for comparison, we're gonna really quickly have him sing into a Sony. Okay, hey Ryan, you out there? Yeah. Cool. So I wanna hear a little bit of you singing on that Sony C37A for a moment. All right. If you don't mind, uh, just give me a little bit of the tune acapella. Home is where I want to be. Pick me up and turn me round. I feel numb, born with a weak heart. Guess I must be having fun. Less we say about it, the better. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to uh, stop for a quick second, change a patch. And then we'll have you sing a little bit on the U87 uh, out there in the middle. Okay. I come home, she lifted up her wings. I guess that this must be the place. Well, I can't tell one from another. Did I find you or you find me? Okay, it's not bad. It's a little, little bumpy, lacks a little personality, but, but not bad. So let's move over now and try the Perlman. Home is where I want to be. Pick me up and turn me round. I feel now born with a weak heart. Guess I must be having fun. Well, sir, the less we say about it, the better. Okay, that sounds good in that it has some nice detail in the top end, but it's a little thin for me. Uh, d does that feel more comfortable in the headphones to sing to than the Sony? In the headphones, yeah. 
Okay, so let me let me just tweak it up a little bit. I'm going to add some bottom to it, compress it a little bit, and we'll see how it sounds in the track. Okay. So please sing a little bit more a cappella for me, if you don't mind. Home is where I want to be. Pick me up and turn me round. I feel numb. She lifted up her wings. I guess that this must be the place. Well, I can't tell one from another. Did I find you or you find me? Well, there was a time before we were born. If someone asks, this is where I'll be. Where I'll, I'll sing into my mouth. Um. Home yeah, just a bit more. It sounded pretty good. Is where I want to be. Pick me up and turn me round. I feel now born with a weak heart. Guess I must be having fun. Lest we say about it the better. Make it up as we go along. Feet on the ground, head in the sky. It's okay, I know nothing's wrong. Nothing. Ah. We, you got light in your eyes. Ah. Ryan? Yeah. Okay, uh, that's feeling pretty good in here. Let's hear it with the track. Cool. You got reverb and everything? Should I put a pop filter on it? Oh, yeah. Uh, we need to do that. We should put a pop filter on it. Yeah. Okay, the 87 sounds pretty good. It's a little little dark, a little bumpy. Lacks a little of the personality that the Sony had. But, um, I don't know. I like the Sony better than the Neumann. So, let's try the Perlman now because I know we've had good luck with that. So, we're going to switch over and patch in the Perlman mic. Yeah, I still got to hear the track and make sure my headphones are good. Yeah, so let's let's do a, a pass. Uh, let me tweak the sound, and you tweak your headphones. Okay. Okay, here we go. Sure. Watch your overall volume.
up and say good night. Okay, great. 